So hi, everyone. Welcome to our headaches and neck pain webinar. Uh, my name is Alex Finesti. I'm a physical therapist here at East Hill Physiotherapy and Acupuncture. And tonight I'm going to be your guide for this headaches and neck pain webinar. Um, thank you all so much for joining me. I'm excited to have you all here for this virtual workshop. Uh, this is my first one. Um, so excuse any technical difficulties if I have them. I think we've got it figured out here. Um, but I hope that we can teach you a few things tonight so you can find out kind of what might be causing your head and neck pain um, and how to alleviate the pain. So let's get moving. Maybe. There we go. Before we get started, a uh, few little housekeeping things. Uh, step one, if you could mute your microphone if you have not already, uh, if you can just click the little uh, microphone icon on the left there. Um, the button should be red, but you can click it to unmute if you have a question, and we will try and get to that. Um, do not click on the present now button, uh, that middle one there. Um, number three, you can click on the chat box in the lower right hand corner to ask a question and it should pop up. Uh, if you don't want to go on the mic, especially feel free to send me a chat um, and it'll pop up for us here. So finally, during the workshop, if you want to make my video larger, so me, I will be showing some stretches as we go. Um, if you can make me larger, you can pin me and the video of my head will be larger. So um, you can click the pin there when you hover over uh, my own icon there. Um, and to do so, just hover the mouse, click on the thumbtack and push the pin. It will make my video larger and make the slideshow video smaller. Then, if you want to switch it back so that the slideshow is larger, you can unpin my video and the slideshow will be larger and I will become smaller. So, again, I will be showing some stretches tonight and I will also be showing some pictures. So, you're going to want to be comfortable switching back and forth unless you have a really big screen. Um, so, to do so, just hover your mouse over my video, click on the thumbtack push pin symbol again. It will make my video smaller and make the slideshow video larger. Um, and then play around with that as you please, because we'll just jump back and forth uh, while I show you some stuff. So some door prizes too. Um, all attendees tonight will get their names put into a random draw for a free East Hill Physio session. Um, obviously the best prize. Um, so yeah, make sure that, uh, that you stick around um, to watch the whole thing, but you will be entered here either way. Uh, and then also as well, if you stick around, we're going to be doing a draw at the end. Um, at the very end, we'll spin the wheel to see who the lucky winner is of the live giveaway. Um, so just for the sake of testing out the chat box, if you want to win, uh, just try typing something just to make sure that people can ask questions and things are coming through okay. So type win, type your name, type whatever you'd like here. And let's just see, make sure that the chat is working so that I can actually see it. Got a couple wins. Yes, please. All right, I've seen a question, a hand go up too. That's cool. Right on. So let's keep it going here, but I can see that all right. So let's talk about what we're going to look forward to tonight. Um, tonight, you can look forward to discovering kind of five main topics here. Number one, what is a trigger point? I'll kind of go into what that means for your muscles. Um, number two, how does neck pain cause headaches and um, head pain? There are four muscles that can cause head pain. Number four, how to identify which muscles may be a problem for you. And then finally, four stretches to help ease them. So let's get right into it. How many of you are here for either A, neck pain, B, headaches, or C, both, or I suppose D, if you're just curious and want to come hang out, then you can put that too. So we've got a both, neck pain, neck pain, C, both, both, neck pain, neck pain, neck pain triggering migraines for someone. Headaches. So all of those, I mean, frankly, like not a surprise to see a lot of one, but a lot of both as well. Frankly, a lot of the time when people come into the clinic, it's, it's you know, my neck is killing me, but also 
you know, it hurts right here. It hurts right behind my eyes. I had somebody today who said she felt like she was being stabbed in the eye, which is awful. Um, so of course, you know, they, they often play together and that's why we're here. So not surprised to hear that there's a lot of both. And I would say almost equal, um, there. So let's try if you can click on the little triangular symbol in the lower right hand corner. And we're going to see what are you hoping to learn about headaches and neck pain? We have a chat as well triggers. So something else there. Prevention right on. All right. So let's try this. We're going to end the poll in three, two, one, and end the poll. So if we look, I got one for how long it'll take to go away, two for what's causing it, two for exercises to get rid of it or prevent it, and then seven for all of the above or something else. So um, maybe not a big surprise, all of the above. Hopefully you can pick up on that today. Let's go for number two. We're going to launch this one. How can you tell if your headaches come from your neck? Um, and let's see what you think here. Is it A, it improves with rest, but certain activities hurt? B, it's worsened with rest, but activities don't hurt? C, it's time of day dependent? D, better with drinking water? So we've got nine. Anybody else feeling brave that they want to try and close that one up? Ooh, 11. There we go. We had a 12th before. Is tw number 12 feeling brave or no? I'll close it in three, two, one. We will end that one there. So we got A, uh, improves with rest, but certain activities hurt. About half of you thought that. B, worsened with rest, but activities don't hurt. About two people got that one. Uh, nobody thought that it was time of day dependent. And then uh, D, it's better with drinking water. Um, so I will say right now, we'll get into it. Uh, it's kind of a trick question because it could kind of be all of those or none of those. So it kind of depends and we'll we'll get into that here. Poll number three, I'll launch this one right away. Can I become completely healed or will this come back again? So A, likely to come back. B, completely healed, no issues. C, come and go. Or D, all of the above. 13, ooh, we found people. Let's go three, two, one, I'm going to end that one. So A, likely to come back. We got two people. Um, B, completely healed, no issues, one vote. That's a little bit of low confidence, I suppose, for people. Hopefully, we can change that a bit tonight. Uh, C, they'll come and go. Um, this might be a little realistic for a day-to-day. -day. Uh, and D, all of the above, we got four people there. Um, so I would say kind of it depends, and all of the above might be a fair one because life you know, we'll have kind of on and off stuff all over the place. But today, where I'm hoping to show you a few things that can help make it more uh, nearly completely or completely healed, no issues. And if it does come and go, hopefully very, very mild compared to what you might have been dealing with before. Um, I always say that your occupation really determines the self-care that you'll need. Um, your body reflects how you use it. So if you're at a desk for a long time, you might be more predisposed to neck pain than someone who's out in the field all day moving around and might have a different part of their body bug them. Um, so again, tonight, hoping to give you a few things that maybe will help with just overall managing it and learning to recognize it for yourself. But the reality is that every once in a while you just sleep funny or something like that. So let's jump right into what is a trigger point. A trigger point is a tightened or shortened band of muscle that is tender to touch. So that would be what people may be used to calling a knot. Um, what you know if you poke around if you feel something it's like well that doesn't feel so good that would be a trigger point right there a trigger point can refer pain and it can be active or latent so an active trigger point actively refers pain um, like a headache so typically if people are suffering from a lot of um, tension headaches this would be what we would call a trigger point a latent trigger point on the other hand is more tender to touch but maybe doesn't refer pain constantly it can refer pain if it's touched um usually i find in the clinic this is prolonged if somebody might tell me like oh it hurts when you push there 
if I'm mean and I hold on it for a while, then they might start to say like, oh, that actually starts to push up into my, into my head or down my arm or whatever it might be. So how does the neck pain cause a headache? I mean, like, how do these trigger points work? Um, our body isn't very good at localizing pain. This is probably due to kind of the multi-level innervation from our spine and from our nervous system and how muscles get the signals to activate from many different levels in your spinal cord. So then your body can kind of only vaguely tell you where it is and can't really locally say like, Boom, it's this thing right here. So you might feel pain there, but it might not actually be coming from that. And that's what we call referred pain. Uh, I often emphasize, I think if you've seen me, um, I've probably had this discussion with you, that pain isn't always damage and it's our body's alarm system and we need to determine why the alarm is going off. So my favorite example is if you think about, if you have a big bruise, like you've walked by a table you get one of those ones on your arm or whatever it is. That's an example of something that looks like a lot of tissue damage. You have bleeding, but it often doesn't hurt, right? You kind of, somebody asks you, oh, what'd you do? And you're like, I don't know. It's been there for three days. I don't even remember what I did about it. Flip side, you can have a paper cut, which you hardly see really no physiological damage or very, very little, but it hurts like crazy. And your body is very concerned about that little cut, right? So, Again, the pain doesn't always match the damage and, and that can be a little bit misleading too, right? So if a muscle feels aggravated, it sets off this pain alarm and refers pain in an area that's consistent with what it touches and its nerve supply. But again, it doesn't always mean that that's always where it's coming from. So if you have something right here, it's not likely that your skull right here is hurting, right? So that's kind of the important thing to keep in mind about these trigger points. So true or false, let's try this in the chat box and see if this pops up here. Um, headaches um, only come from trigger points in the neck, true or false? Got a few answers already, we got a lot of false. Anybody else wanna weigh in false, false? False. Okay, so I made that one too easy, probably. False, headaches can be caused by lots of different factors. So stress obviously is the biggest factor, whether it's your dog, your child, work, whatever it is. Um, blood pressure, medications, lots of side effects kind of causing blood pressure issues there. Whether it's your blood sugar, maybe you're somebody who gets a little bit hangry and needs a snack before supper time, that can be a big one. Um, arthritis or the joints in your neck, um, they can cause kind of some that lower head pain um, and just like vague neck pain going with that. Hydration, that's another one, you know, if you haven't had enough to drink um, or if you're giving a Google webinar and your mouth is super dry, uh, maybe that gives you some headaches. Um, finally, migraines too, right? Migraines we know really aren't necessarily related to the neck. Um, but of course, any of this can come from the neck. So what can send it to the neck? There are four muscles that I commonly treat most often, and there are other things as well, um, but four muscles that can cause head pain. So number one is the upper fibers of your trapezius. That is these muscles up here. Number two, your suboccipitals and your cervical erectors, and I will show you what that means. Number three, your temporalis. And number four, your sternocleidomastoid or your SCM. So let's get right into it. Number one, the trapezius. The trapezius is a muscle that goes from the back of your head, as you can see on the skull, down to the outside of your shoulder, and then actually down to about the midpoint of your spine there. So it's a big diamond shape if you go to both sides. Um, the upper ones are what you typically see as these muscles up here. And I think almost everybody who has tight shoulders or say as I carry my tension in my neck is always, you know, rubbing these muscles here, right? So it connects from your skull and spine to your shoulder blade and the upper fibers specifically attach from the skull and the neck to this outside of the shoulder. It's responsible for helping to get that arm up and around the corner when you're lifting your arm above your head. Um, and then generally raising the shoulders there. 
Number two, the suboccipitals and the cervical erectors. So on the left are what are called the suboccipital muscles. These muscles are little, little muscles that are motion control at the base of your skull or your occiput. Fun trick here, they are responsible for part of what your eyes are how they're playing with the neck so if you put your hand and your fingers just below the base of your skull and then turn your eyes as far as you can one direction and the other you can actually feel these muscles kind of tighten and loosen uh, back and forth as you go so again all the way out one way or the other and you should actually feel these muscles turn on and off these muscles are constantly turning on to help kind of balance your head as you turn your eyes to look around your environment so again that's that left side picture nadia says wow i love that trick actually it's super uh it's super fun um that's that left side picture and then the right side picture are your cervical erectors and the erectors run along your spine and help hold your head and neck up um the the muscles here as a whole i you can kind of specifically work through them but i often tell people as well you know we're kind of thinking of everything in the back as a bit of a unit right so trying to hold on to this and and what might be running along the back there number three this is your temporalis muscle so this is a jaw muscle um, it attaches from the side of your head out through here and then down to the lower jawbone it is a very important muscle for chewing um, if you can imagine if you open your jaw and then pull up if you feel here on the sides of your head you can just kind of open and close your mouth and i'm you know most of you aren't on camera so you nobody will see you do it except you so just open and close and you can actually feel your forehead kind of expand underneath your palm. So that's that temporalis muscle helping to, uh, to pull you back there. And then number four, your sternocleidomastoid here. Um, this runs from behind the ear and attaches along your collarbone. Um, so up here and then down to here, it actually sort of has two parts. Um, single side contraction will help create uh, rotation. So if I turn with the right shadow here, you can see through here. So if you hold kind of just above your sternum and then turn your head all the way one direction, you'll feel this tighten up in your hand. And then you can go the other way. So single side contraction will actually rotate your neck and then both sides will help bring you downwards there. So how can you identify if your neck muscles are what's causing the problem. Uh, number one is just check your range of motion. Uh, try some basic movements. So if you try forward, you try backward, if you rotate, uh, if you side flex, side to side, if you look in a mirror or even, you know, just kind of feel to yourself, if something feels really tight or if something feels stiff, um, if you can see you're not moving as well in one direction, this can be a great clue that something involved in that motion is kind of bothering you. Number two, try the stretches that we discussed here tonight. Um, you know, again, these are the really, really common ones that I've picked for you today. Um, so we'll go through that one. And if you start there, if they're tough for you, it's worth working on kind of thing. It's um, if these are, you know, not painful, but if they're uncomfortable, stretchy, this is a good place to start. Um, number three, kind of poke yourself. I always tell people, you know your body best. I'm just the guy who took some school to uh, to help you kind of figure it out. So you're the one who can tell like, ah, oh, yeah, it just hurts like right here. Um, poke yourself where it hurts and then use a resource like the one I've linked here, triggerpoints.net. Um, and you can see if that kind of makes sense with what you're feeling. Um, sometimes muscles are tender and aren't referring pain. And this is kind of where as physios, we can help you tell the difference. But this website is a really cool resource. Um, I use it all the time with patients um, if I'm feeling stuck or if I'm just trying to validate what they're telling me like, oh, it's like I have pain down my arm, I have pain here. It's like, is this what you mean? It's a really cool website that you can look up symptoms, but you can also, um, yeah, you can also just see kind of pain pictures and stuff. And you'll see some of these pictures in a second here. And if you look at those pictures and say like, yeah, that like that looks like what I feel, then you can probably start with something like that and see if it pays off for you. So let's look at some of those pictures. That's that's the next step. So first, that upper fiber traps. Um, this is, again, that muscle there. Commonly, the trigger points for people, and if you do it on yourself, if you kind of feel this like just above at the edge of the shoulder, so if I get a little closer to my camera, kind of right here before it gets bony, if you squeeze that, that's a typical trigger point. And it typically refers pain. People will complain to me, kind of this side of the neck, 
I might feel a little bit up here or even just behind the eye, kind of like in that temple, that might actually be your trap muscle, even though it's not really attaching um, through there. Some people will even actually get jaw pain when they feel that, so right at the corner of the jaw. Uh, when I took my dry needling course, um, when I got needled there for the first time, I felt a tweak in my jaw right away. It was like, oh, super strange, not connected there, but right away I could feel kind of this release that just bang, like, there we go. That's some of that pain. So again, if you feel pain kind of behind that ears, down the back of the neck a little bit, in the jaw, or just behind your eyes, this might be one stretch to emphasize for yourself. Let's look at number two, the suboccipitals and those cervical erectors. So if you have suboccipital pain or pain coming from your suboccipitals, typically your pain is often this like just behind the eyes like it just always feels like it's back here people often tell me like it feels like it's like deep like if you were to put like a rod through behind the eyes and that's where they're kind of feeling there and if you think about that trick that i showed you where you're turning your eyes back and forth of course there's a bit of an association there right so thinking about that if you have a lot of pain that just feels like your eyes kind of aren't getting a rest for you it's probably these little muscles at the back of your head on the other hand if your head or if your pain is more up on the back here like more on the the skull up there that might actually be referring from the erectors and that would be just the long muscles along your spine there they typically are sending pain a little bit higher up and more just this vague back of the head pain so if you're if your pain is not right here at the base but more up here you're probably looking more at cervical erector pain and some flexion stretching and maybe some strength would be good for you there. Number three, your temporalis. This one, people will typically complain of this, maybe this eyebrow pain or a lot of pain like in that fan shape, like you can see on the left side of the screen, kind of where that muscle is, people will feel this like, it's just always the side of my head. And then sometimes people, and I've seen this um, in clinic fairly often, people complain of this like this upper palate pain. Like, yeah, I think that roof of my mouth or my teeth hurt almost. And that can actually be, again, this temporalis referring there. So if you have this like vague toothachey roof of your mouth pain, but you're really tender here when you touch, that is probably um, one for you that you may not have connected. Number four, back to this SCM muscle again. Um, like I said, there are two heads to this muscle. If you kind of look at that middle picture, that's more of that frontal on that sternal head. And then that rear one is more of the, what they call the clavicular head or more of the collarbone one. Um, but they both kind of wrap there and then just come up and attach. Um, with this pain, I find more people complain of ear pain and maybe this like higher forehead pain. I don't see as much of the the right around the eye pain, but it is worth investigating. So for yourself, if you find that you're really tender kind of on the front of the neck, or if you try to stretch that I'll give you tonight, if you try that one, it's pretty stretchy. Um, it could be worth it for you. You can also try if you go just below the ear, if you poke kind of on the back, just down there and start working your way forward, some people will find that that is really, really tender right away. Um, but again, I see more of the picture on the right, that ear pain or just behind the ear um, with some top of the head pain. But yeah, honestly, it's been a while since somebody's really described it. It feels like somebody's you know putting a knife right through the top of my head kind of thing. So I see more of that right side one. So another true or false, bring you back to the chat box. If you have headaches, you should just lay down and rest. True or false? Got a true, false, false, false. More false, true, false, true. Good. All right. So. I maybe did a better job of making that one more of an it depends. Um, I chose false, but gave it it depends um, because sometimes that is true. Obviously, sometimes you just need to lay down and let your headache calm down and you shouldn't feel guilty about resting. Um, you know, sometimes like if it's a big migraine or you just need a nap, 
that is absolutely the solution. Um, but if you're always laying down to try and get your headaches to calm down, it's probably more that we need to get that neck moving. And the research shows that physical activity improves um, your outcomes and helps you get better and back to what you like to do faster. So doing your exercises and getting moving will help get rid of the problem. But most patients actually find their exercises relieving too. Like there's somebody I can think of right now on my caseload that says like, as soon as my headache starts to you know ramp up on me, I know like, okay, got to do my physio exercises again. So. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of, we don't want you to have to re keep using that for pain control, but it's really, it should be helpful, um, to do it. So kind of toughing it out in the short term and not laying down, um, to really help yourself in the long run. So it is true and false. How about that? So now we're going to get into it. The important thing, um, you should consult your doctor or a registered physio to get an accurate diagnosis um, and individualized treatment plan before commencing any new program. But these things can be something to try and kind of get you off at least on the right foot. But again, it really depends for everybody. Um, so especially if you may have other health stuff going on, it's worth checking to make sure it's not a complication from something else too. Um, so now you can pin me because I will show you some of these stretches as we go here, I'm gonna be demonstrating. So again, you can pin me, you don't have to, if you'd rather look at the picture rather than me, that's fine too, I will never find out. So um, let's get into it here, click that thumbtack on me if you'd like, and let's jump into it. So number one, how do we stretch our traps? Um, just the side bending stretch. I typically give people three times 30 seconds for most stretches. The research really shows here too, and I tell everybody I treat this, intensity is not the be all end all. So you're much, better off being consistent about doing your stretching rather than trying once to tear your head off your shoulders and then calling it a day. So for this one here, just bending sideways, this would be this side stretch for me. Bending directly sideways, if you find I don't get much from that, then you can try and turn your ear towards your armpit. So for me, down this way, and see if this makes the stretch more intense. So for me, that's where I finally get a stretch on this side and just holding it there. Again, gentle stretch, not trying to tear your head off your shoulders, just a gentle, gentle pull. Um, and I would do three side or three times 30 seconds. Uh, for neck stuff, I often tell people do both um, because you're unlike one shoulder, your neck isn't working uh, in isolation. It's always two sides moving together, right? So typically helps to do both, but for some people, if you can't push into that pinch, don't feel like you need to push into a pinch, gentle stretch only. Number two, Stretching out those suboccipitals and cervical erectors, um, chin tuck and flexion. So chin tuck, I'm gonna turn sideways. If you give yourself a double chin, really pull that in, that is a chin tuck. You can overshoot it where then you'll feel all these big muscles engaged. This is just a little bit of a double chin there. And then pulling your chin towards your chest. Holding like that. You should feel this stretch on the back of the neck. For some people, even just starting with the chin tuck, they will already feel a stretch right away. I definitely, I treat a lot of people who, who tell me that just doing the chin tuck already feels like a big stretch because really, if we think about all our time spent at our desk reading and everything, we all live here. So all these muscles are really short. So then when you straighten up a little bit, then suddenly that gets longer. You pull that chin in a little bit, that gets even longer there. So nice little stretch there. Again, I usually tell people three times 30 seconds, gentle stretching. Number three, temporalis. This one's tough to stretch. So instead I typically tell people to do a massage. And what I find is a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I rub my head for like five seconds. And then it doesn't really solve anything. So I usually tell people spend about a minute uh, three times on the one that's bothering you. So finding, feeling around up here, and you might say like, oh, that spot right there. Spend a minute of just even holding pressure or just gentle back and forth. I've got one right there. Um, so holding that and just holding it for about 60 seconds, actually, you know, let it take some time with that pressure for that muscle um, to feel that. And you might find you get more lasting pressure rather than just the five seconds of rub your temples and then carry on with your day. So again, I usually say three times 60 seconds, not trying to torture yourself with this. Don't dig as hard as you can. Instead, just gentle pressure and see if that helps. Number four, to stretch that SCM. This is cervical extension, so neck extension and rotation. So going back, so this would be a nice big stretch there. Um, you can play with how much rotation um, and extension you do. For some people, 
just going back might be a big stretch, although they might feel it more here. Um, and then, but you should have to turn a little bit and get that through there. Um, and again, you might turn a lot first and then lean backwards, or you might go straight back and then just turn sideways a little bit there. So play with how much you rotate for a different stretch. Um, you can see on the model in the picture there, she has a really well-defined SCM sticking out, just that line right below her ear down to her sternum. That's where you should be feeling this, but everybody's a little bit different there. So again, be nice to yourself. Um, don't try and tear your head off your shoulders and don't push into a big severe pinch either. So let's jump back in the chat again. What is your biggest takeaway from this one? Um, type in the chat box what you learned and then um, maybe if somebody wants, we can get them on the microphone as well and we can turn on cameras here. But uh, if you've got any big ones here, throw it in the chat box here for us. And let's see if I can maybe pick some stuff to talk about. Gentle stretching. That's awesome. My neck needs a lot of stretching. All right, well, thanks for coming here. Specific exercises, specific muscles. Good, I'm glad I could help with that one. So I'll speak to the gentle stretching while people are writing that. I find that's the most common one. People are like, oh yeah, I just like, I just reef on it and it feels really, really good. Um, and then typically people don't wanna stretch because it feels awful because, well, you know, maybe it feels good after, but it's really not pleasant to do. I find if you're better about actually gently doing it, you're more likely to actually work it into your day. People aren't as afraid to do it and don't feel like it's as hard to work in. Is there some place we can find these stretches? We have one person asked. Yes, absolutely. You will, um, we'll get to that, but um, this weekend you will receive a PDF with these stretches and then a few more exercises that I've picked out for you for these stretches. Repeating stretches. Good. So thanks for that one. I usually tell people to do their exercises, if you can work it in two or three times a day. Um, again, if you can be gentle, it's not super hard to work it in. Um, so a couple times a day and then people get really good changes really quickly. Gentle stretching, for sure. I always do it until I feel it. That used to be me all the time. I would pretty much stretch till I was shaking. And then that's when I figured, okay, that's that's a good enough stretch finally. It's, it's not doing anything until until you're vibrating, like holding it, right? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. So yeah, um, again, there will be a PDF this weekend. We'll kind of, when we do the wrap up, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, but you'll get a few things this weekend too. Um, anything else people want to throw up in there before we keep going? Five, four, I can't see people typing. So three, two, one. All right, let's keep going. So maybe what you've been waiting for, maybe the only reason you came, a giveaway. Um, Michelle is going to be our Vanna White. So she's put the names of anybody who has attended here into the wheel of names. Um, I'll invite her to share her screen with all of us and she's gonna spin the wheel and we're gonna see who wins a shepherd's hook. So this is a cool little toy. Um, that is valued at 30 bucks and it's nice because let's say that you've got a knot, a trigger point, and let's say that your, your partner, your spouse, doesn't wanna push hard enough for you, this is a great one. So you can just go dig through there. I've got a good trigger point here right now. I hear something spinning. All right. So we'll get in touch with you, Joanne. Congratulations. And uh, I've pre-tested your shepherd's hook for you. It works really well. So there we go, she's clapping. There we go, Joanne, I promise this thing works great. Um, I can feel it right now, it's working wonderfully. So um, hopefully you get a good one. And if, uh, if you stop in, if I'm around, we'll, uh, I'll make sure I can kind of show you a few that you can use, okay? Let's keep it going. How can we help you? Um, this is a big one I thought was maybe important to wrap up. Sometimes there's just something else that's uh, going on. It's just a little bit stubborn. You might need a combination of stretching and strengthening. I picked kind of the most common stuff that I see. Um, hopefully it works for you. But again, if it doesn't, we've got a few people here that can help hopefully, right? So um, a physio can help with exercise prescription, uh, soft tissue massage, manual therapy, and some of us can also do needling techniques. So whether that's a dry needling, an IMS, or an acupuncture, um, kind of a combination of things when you're here. 
Um, a registered massage therapist can use various massage techniques to help your neck as well. So maybe many of you didn't know, maybe you did, uh, but we now have massage therapy as well. And um, Aaron can definitely help you out with some neck pain as well. So, um, you know, we'd be happy to help you for sure. I would, of course, be happy to help you. Um, but yeah, hopefully, honestly, hopefully what I gave you, I always tell people, I'm not trying to take your money and get you coming to physio forever. So hopefully what I gave you today actually helps a little bit. And, uh, and then if not, if it's just a little bit stubborn, hopefully we can help you out too. Um, so, uh, now we're going to answer any burning questions, um, in a minute here. If you have a question that's specific to you though, and you're wondering if physio would be appropriate, uh, if you want to type, just, uh, call me or neck in the chat box, I'll follow up with you directly. We have a talk 15. I'll just give you a phone call if we've got your information already and we will, uh, we'll reach out and we can have a chat on the phone. Um, if you've heard enough today and you just know that I'd rather go to physio and get some help with it, um, then you can call us or book online. The information there is on the left. We have both the um, the house, the 26th Street, and we have the Sterling Center there as well. So you can call, you can book online, um, and you can pick any one of us to come see. Um, watch your email over the weekend. This goes to um, somebody asking about, um, you're welcome. Um, somebody asking about if they will get these information this information you can watch your email over the weekend for the links of the video recording so if i was maybe speaking too fast because this was my first one and i was too excited um or you just want to go back and look at it again um you'll be able to look at that you'll also get the uh exercise pdf handout and i only went over four stretches today but um you actually will see seven yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Seven um, exercises that I ended up picking, a little bit of stretching and a little bit of strength for you as well to uh, to try. So kind of one for each, uh, one stretch, one strength for each muscle that we talked about today. Um, and then um, finally, please check your email for the survey that we send out. Uh, we want these to be useful um, for you. We're not just doing it to talk to ourselves, hopefully. So if, uh, if there was something that you think should be changed or something that could help us make this even better if you thought it was good, um, please do that survey and let us know we're trying to help you out. So um, with that, if anybody has any burning questions they want to throw in the chat box just to start some discussion, um, Throw it in there and let's see what we can, uh, let's see what I can speak towards for you here. Hi. Hi, we got somebody here. Yeah. Who's, uh, uh Bill. Yep. Are you, uh, is it normal to have, uh, the pain on one part of your head or what happens if you get it sometimes one place, sometimes the other, uh, Temporal or capital, whatever, you know. Right. Um, so I guess the question being, like, is it normal for the pain to move around a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say yes. Um, typically, off. honestly, I see people who aren't, um, you know, it's usually not just one neck muscle that's bothering you. So, yeah, if you might have a day where you sleep funny um, and, and it's one part of your neck, and then another day you might see um, – you, yeah, you might just find that a different part of your neck gets a little fired up. It might be a little bit activity dependent with what you do as well there. So yes, it is normal for it to move around, um, but you probably have a few consistent spots that, that typically bother you. Second question, are those fancy sure. pillows any good? Um, honestly, my big view on pillows is it depends and there's no right answer and that's a great way to sewer yourself as a physio because uh <laughs> i don't want to uh, some people love a big fluffy pillow and then other people um other people don't um i know a lot of physios typically say just like a flat thin um a flat thinner pillow um can um is kind of the best one. And I think in general, that makes sense because if we think about, you don't want your neck to be cranked up all day if the pillow's on this side, you don't want to be pushed all the way one direction. So I think it's more about size for your shoulder and your sleeping position rather than um, rather than the material. Because again, same thing, if your neck doesn't like going forward, it doesn't matter what it's made out of. If you're flexed too far forwards all night, that's not gonna help. Um, so Shelly just asked a question in the chat, can the type of pillow have an effect? So maybe like the gel and that sort of thing. Um, same thing i think it's more about height so finding something that doesn't feel like it really pushes you into a direction you don't like to go based on your sleeping position is probably the most important thing 
Uh, Shelly also asked another question that I didn't want to skip past here. Um, I didn't realize needling was safe in the neck. I presume it is. It is definitely, it is something that I use a lot for people. Um, probably used it three or four times today. Um, it's a nice tool. It's not the only way to get something done. Uh, but yeah, typically what we're doing is avoiding important structures on the front of the neck. So you won't get much needling, if at all, on the front of your neck, but everything at the back, you got a lot of bony stuff there. And when we learn needling techniques, we learn depth of needles and that sort of thing to avoid anything serious. So it is definitely safe if applied properly. Um, I have another one, thoughts on chiropractor there. Um, frankly, with any profession, ourselves included, good and bad, so I won't speak towards one or the other. I think finding somebody who makes you feel safe and that you feel like you trust them and they're looking out for your best interest is the best one. But again, I know some um, I know some people that I really, really trust that I think are really great people, and I don't think that, uh, and I probably know a couple of physios that I don't agree with their approach either. So um, I would say, you know, finding somebody that makes you feel safe and that makes you feel comfortable, because if you're not comfortable with the treatment, whether it's needles, it's hands-on, it's manipulation, it's not the right treatment for you. For you. So that's kind of my take on that one. Um, Shelly has said that needling, that's good to know as it has worked well for me in the past in other areas. Yeah, Shelly, I love using needling with people. It is a... Uh, um, like even today, somebody came in with headaches and right away just like, oh, it's so much better. So if uh, if it's bothering you um, and you've had good luck with it elsewhere on your body, it's worth a try for sure. Any other burning questions? No, we'll give it a few more seconds if anyone. Just type me a letter if you feel like you're about to type something, but I don't want to rush your, uh, your speed typing. Just send something real quick and I can, uh, I'll wait for it. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so if you would like a call later, if you wanna talk about something specifically for yourself, um, again, you can throw your name in here or you can give us a shout and uh, you can book a Talk 15 as well. So it is a bookable option both by calling the front uh, desk and um, online. Both are options that you can book into somebody's schedule and we can give you a call that way too. So if you wanna chat more but you didn't want your question brought up specifically here, um, give us a shout and uh, we will we will get you taken care of okay so thanks so much for coming I really appreciate uh, people being involved and we'll see what our next virtual workshop in January so no Christmas workshop here um, but January 2023 and hopefully we see some of you in the clinic um, thanks thanks to everybody who came and thanks for participating <laughs>